Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at how to test using NUnit event raising and event handling within objects. This is a very common scenario for most developers as we have objects that raise events that uh, we want to listen for and respond to. We need to make sure that we actually test that some, when we make a call the event is actually raised as we thought it would be. I've created a simple class down here <coughs> Excuse me, called event class. It's very simple, takes, has one method on it. Basically, the only thing it does is pass in a boolean whether you want to raise the event or not, and pass in true. If the event has actually been wired up externally, it will actually just raise a simple you know, message. As you can tell, I've created a standard delegate here. This is I could have just used a standard event handler, but I decided to create my own for demonstration purposes. So let's go ahead and create our test. The first way I'm going to do this is doing the .NET 2.0 way. I'm going to do it with anonymous delegates. So let's go ahead and create our event class. Let me go ahead and rename this to event class so I can get a naming conflict. Since class is a reserved or keyword in C sharp. And because I'm actually trying to test to make sure it was raised, I'm going to go ahead and create a variable called was raised and I'm going to turn that off by default. Now normally, when you create a, a event handler, it actually creates an external method or a second method, and that makes it very hard to test. So if we were to do it normal conventions and say my test event, it actually wants to create this. Well, that makes it very hard to test. You can't actually call into that, at least not very easily, without creating some you know, external you know, static variables and all that stuff, and that's just ugly. So one way we can actually get around that is by using anonymous delegates and doing something like this. Was raised equals a true. Now you'll notice I didn't specify the signature. This here. I could have actually specified the signature inside my anonymous delegate, just like this. But it's not needed. Resharper's telling me that it's actually dead code. It's not actually going to be used by the compiler. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that out in order to reduce the amount of noise we have here. The next thing I'm going to want to do is actually call into my event class, some test method, do true. And then I'm going to do an assert that was raised actually was set to true. Very simple. I'm going to go ahead and run this. I'm going to be lazy today. I'm actually going to run it via the Resharper test runner. If you don't have Resharper, feel free to use testdriven.net or you know the .net, the end unit IDE. So I'm actually going to step step over that delegate. So now my my delegate or my event has been wired up, and I'm going to step into my method call. And what I want to actually demonstrate is you'll see it hop back to right here. So you'll see that my my anonymous delegate is being called. So let's go ahead and step out of that. And when it comes back, raise is equal to true, and I can go ahead and complete this. Then my pass, my test pass green. That's actually exactly what I wanted. Now this is cool. This is the very .NET 2.0 way. Sorry to to uh, offend anybody that's still using .NET 2.0, but let's let's go ahead and show you how to do it using Lambda expressions, which I think is a really slick way of doing it. I'm gonna cheat and instead of retyping, I'm just gonna copy and paste this since it is the same. Now, doing it via lambdas is very similar to doing it via delegates. I'm gonna stop to do plus equals. But instead of wiring up a delegate, basically all I'm going to do is do sender and e. Basically, I just set up my my signature. I could actually define the object types, but that's actually dead code as well. As you'll see, the I, the resharper is telling me that I don't need that, so I'll go ahead and delete that. And then I'm going to say was raised was raised equals to true. So this here is a replacement for anonymous delegate via using a lambda expression. It will do the exact same thing. So because it will do the same thing, I'm going to go ahead and delete or copy and paste this code from above. Let's go ahead and put a breakpoint here and run this again and see what happens. And if I step into this code, you'll see it steps in. It is wired up just, just like I thought. It actually does step into my my uh, lambda expression and because everything was the same and everything did pass 
I got another green as well. So hey, that's actually pretty cool too. Now, let's take this and do the exact opposite. Here we're trying to test and ensure that it was raised. Let's go ahead and copy this code because why retype it? Let's actually do a test to ensure that it wasn't raised. So the exact same concept, but backwards. I'm going to go ahead and basically all I've done is I've said do not raise this. And I'm going to just assert that it was false. So let's go ahead and click debug. And that passed as well. So hey, that's great. Now let's do one extra test. Here we're, we're actually not evaluating anything. We're just verifying whether the event was actually raised. Or not. Let's actually evaluate whether or not data passed back from the event argument is actually valid. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new Go ahead and create a new test method. I'm going to steal some code from above. Uh, what I'm going to do is basically, this event will actually return me a new instance of itself. So I just want to ensure that it is going to return itself. So let's go ahead and do event class dot my test event. And by the way, the sender and e you can give this x and y, moo and cow if you want. What you call it is completely up to you. You're just creating a, a pointer to whatever to the object type you're trying to use. Let's do return type equal e dot or sender. So. I'm actually going to use a sender object that I declare right here and assign it back to my return type. And I want to do an assert that uh, return type is type of uh, event class. And if this is not a type of event class, it will actually fail. So let's go ahead and run this real quick, see what happens. Ah, it's it's no, what happened? Ah, well, forgot to wire, actually make my method call. Here's an example of where your test would have, would have been meaningless because it would have failed and you wouldn't have understood why. Let's do sum and let's do true. Let's rerun this test with the real logic in it. Is the return type event class? It sure is. So we can actually put any kind of logic we want in here. We can, you know, right now we have it set to one line of code. We could do something like system diagnostics debug That right line. We could have it output anything we want. We can actually do as much logic inside of here as we want. But for now, we're just going to actually just have it return that. So there you go. I'll briefly demonstrate how we can actually unit test events that are raised inside of a class that we're testing or a method that we're testing. It's fairly straightforward. Just to kind of recap, there are multiple ways you can do it. The 2.0 way is to use an anonymous delegate. Remember, you don't need to actually create the signature because it's inferred. If you're using .NET 3.5, you can go ahead and use a Lambda expression. It'll get you the exact same result. And keep in mind, anything you, you can put anything you want within these, these brackets because you're essentially creating an anonymous method at this point. So, hope you learned something today. Until next time.